It's time for the weekend recap. I go by the name of Ak. And I'm Barack the Boxing Bully. Look, uh, thanks for joining us to the Zone Boxing Show. Hi, Mungia was back out. I had a few things to say last week about this choice of opponent. Now, we know he's a talented fighter. This was a showcase fight. But at this level in his career with that many wins, um, should we still be seeing this? That's the question. Look, I believe that Munguia is talented enough to fight all of the top guys in the sport in his and in around his weight class. When will it happen is the question, Barack. Uh, he wins a uh, knockout victory over Korea. Uh, your take on it. I have no take on it. <laughs> I mean, listen, they forced him to go back to 160. I want to know if he wants to continue at 160 or go to 168. And I just want to know if he wants to fight better competition. There's no showcase fights after 40 wins, 40 yeah. victories. You've been a champion at 154. I like Mungia. I like Mungia a lot. I like the fight with him and Gabe Rosado. You know, he showed me his toughness in that. Gabe is a very, very tough guy, skillful guy. Probably could have outboxed him a little bit better, you know, but chose to bang with him. Mungia is the guy who, who needs to fight the champions. He needs to fight the top guys at 160 or maybe even 168. I don't want to disrespect Korea. I just think that he's not at that level. And he and Mungia showed it. <laughs> yeah, and that's not, not that that's level. not disrespecting. Now, to, to Mungia's credit, Barack, he did call out Triple G, but it's not the first time that he mentioned some names. But apparently nothing ever comes to fruition. I just think that... Uh, you know yeah, when it, come, I don't it comes, I put it all on. Mungia, no, but look, there comes you know? there comes a point where talk is cheap. So I, I want to see some action, and I'm not saying it is his fault. Again, he doesn't promote the fights, he doesn't make the fights, but there has to be pressure applied to everybody involved in making those type of fights. He has a good manager. I met the guy, great team over there. Yeah. Pressure needs to be applied, whether it's to. My guy, Eric Gomez, Oscar De La Hoya. Look, we love the people over there at Golden Boy. There's a disconnect somewhere. The fight needs to be made either with him against uh, Demetrius Andre, uh, Triple G, uh, Jamal Charlo. Somebody, somebody that we know that is a threat needs to share the ring with Munguia next. Nobody else next. Nobody else next. At, well, at one, one time, of all of the all of the top guys at 160 were fighting on the zone, except Jamal Charlo. And my God, they didn't even fight each other. That makes no sense. You know what I mean? I like Mungia a lot. I think he's yeah, a very, very good fighter. But yes. uh, come on, he, he, like, what is he gonna do? Wait for everybody to leave because he's that youngest guy. <laughs> He has he has that ability as well to just wait. As, for him to leave. as they used to say around my way, the jig is up. And, and and again, he's a he's a really good fighter, and he's super talented, tough. He probably has ability to to, to outwork all of those guys. But let's see you share the ring with him. All right, listen. Also, uh, Anthony Yard wins uh, knockout victory. I believe that might have been a showcase fight. Get him ready for better be which is going to happen. I don't mind that. That I don't mind. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. that's already set. I yeah. believe that's going to happen sometime. I mean, better be if it's like fighting two people anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> look. Yeah. You need the softest touch you can find <laughs> before you fight better be if. <laughs> and, and that's set for January uh, 28th, right? Yes. Uh, look, let's talk about the Zone X series. I ain't going to lie to you, Barack. I was on Saturday. I, I was on the sofa on Saturday watching the fights. A very entertaining show. Couch potato style. Mm -hmm. Cal yeah, yeah, yeah. Couch yeah, potato okay. style. I had some chips. I had some fish. I had uh, some fried fish. You know, I had, I had a little a little time to myself. So, you know, I actually had family over and they actually enjoyed the fight as well. My sister, my brother-in-law. Now, I seen Rockman Jr. He was on the show. Um, last minute replacement. We were supposed to fight Vitor Belfort. For a guy named Greg Hardy. Interesting. Uh, enough, you know, watching footage on Greg Hardy on social media, he didn't look like a guy that would be a real threat to a professional uh, experienced boxer. Uh, the way he moved, his body language, it just didn't, it looked odd. But inside that ring, Greg Hardy was too heavy. Let's not ignore the fact that he was over 100 pounds, over, you know, probably 100 pounds more than uh, Haseem Rockman Jr. That weight plays a part, but he was an athletic big guy, former football player, MMA fighter. He brought the heat that entire fight, all four yeah. rounds. And I see him landed a couple of shots here and there, Barack, but he just overwhelmed him. Yeah, I mean, when, when you look at these crossover fights, when you look at these YouTube fights, 
you don't have a disparity in 94 pounds, you know? And, and when you get when you get that much of a dis disparity, sometimes even skills can, can, can be overwhelmed. But that really kind of wasn't the case because Greg Hardy didn't just rough him up. Right. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't just grab him and put his weight on him. He was actually boxing. Right. He was actually boxing. And when you look at the first round, that's how I thought the fight was gonna go. You know, Hasim Rockman jabbing, staying away, moving side to side, circling him, boom, pot shot. And I thought it was gonna go like that. And then eventually, boom, hitting him with the left hand, keep hitting him with the left hand, and maybe even stop Hardy. But right. no, that second round, Hardy closed that distance, boom. Even his jab was was sharp, you know, uppercut. It's like every punch that landed was able to hurt. Now that's when that that poundage and came in because even some of his arm punches seemed like they hurt Hakim Rahman because he's such a big, strong guy. It's not like Seth, like um, what was that guy Seth um, Seth Thomas back in the days who. Golden Boy promoted. He came from <laughs> he came from football. It wasn't like he just came from football. This guy was a fighter. Yeah. This guy yeah. was actually a fighter. So he already knew how to throw a punch. He already knew how to put his weight into his punch. He was a dangerous guy, like he kept saying in the conferences beforehand. I just didn't expect him to to jab like that, to to move like he moved. And look, after the fight, he, he still had energy. He was dancing. I was waiting for him to do a backflip. You know, yeah, I think. I think maybe Hasim Rahman tie it out because you know those punches can take the wind out of you. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah, he 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 showed boxing ability. Barack, to your point, I mean, he boxed better than we expected. But I think that it was a combination of that and the overwhelming weight and and volume of punches on him, and he landed a shot and hurt him, you know, in the fight. And I think he, I would say he recovered, but it just affected him. It just threw everything off. And credit to Greg Hardy for that big win. You know, it's a no, big win. Also, for... credit to Hasim Rahman yes. for, for fighting this last minute replacement yes. that's 90 something pounds more than exactly. you. Exactly. For, for getting up off the canvas and still fighting and trying to win the fight. You know, yeah. was, and for saying, yo, I need a rematch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, wanting to go back in there with him. Tough guy, big hearted Hasim Rahman. Like you said, Barack, to actually even accept something like that. People think, oh, because I'm a boxer, he's not. But we all saw why you can't always count on that. Barack, I don't want to ignore the main event. Uh, Dean the Great versus Wally Sharks. Small guys. Look, we all know Dean the Great has some momentum coming off a big win. He looked like to be the most skillful fighter out of that whole zone X series situation. Um, but he fought a guy who had an amateur background who came in there and and hurt Dean the Great. He was out boxing him. He was beating him to the punch. When I tell you. It was an entertaining fight, Barack throughout. And then Dean the Great landed a big right hand and hurt him. One thing that I, I noticed that the, the commentary, nobody on the card mentioned that after he landed a big right, he gave him a little push that knocked him on his feet. It cost him like another two, three seconds um, in that count, uh, as far as the referee counting him out. So I, he, when, he, when he heard him, he was on one knee. And then he gave him that little... Lennox Lewis, Mike Tyson push to kind of uh, to, to, to get him <laughs> yeah, off. Yeah, go down him. faster. Yeah, yeah, go down and stay down a little longer. Nobody mentioned nothing. That was a little strange to me. Nevertheless, he was a little hurt. He was upset, really emotional. Only 18 years old, the kid. Uh, he didn't really even want to engage in 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 the in the sportsmanship af afterwards, but he did eventually. He was upset. He felt like he shouldn't have been stopped. But the one thing that he did was he was he looked into the corner when he was hurt, leaning on the corner. And he he just wasn't aware. It wasn't that he was quitting the fight. He just wasn't looking at the referee. So the referee waved the fight. I think that was his mistake. But it, I believe that had he not been pushed down, he would have got up and um, probably the fight would have been stopped. Nevertheless, credit to Dean the Great. Were you, were you yelling at the, were you yelling at your TV? Kind of like when Mike Tyson got knocked out by Evander Hol not Evander Holyfield, but Buster I'm Douglas. Still and you're like, yo, why are you looking for your mouthpiece? Get up, and the referee is telling you to get up. Yeah. I didn't yell as like, loud as I did. Like, I didn't yell on. as loud as I did that time, but I did say, what are you looking at? Why are you looking that way? Look at the damn ref. That's inexperience. Inexperience, inexperience. that's all that was, man. Yeah, but, but I mean, you know what, these refs have to be a little bit more lean. on, yeah, on exactly, lean. more on guard to protect these guys because they're not oh, yeah, yeah. fighters. That, they're that, not, that they're not guys who are fighting normally. Well, he, I mean, look, this kid, you know, it's a four-round fight. He had an amateur background. Dean the Great also has amateur experience. 
And these guys can fight. And these you guys can tell. I, I think mean, Dean the Great is going to eventually wind up fighting in our world, which is the you know yeah, what we I mean, call I, the real boxing may, world. May, maybe, but I don't know. I, I think I would say Sharks kind of exposed uh, a few things with Dean the Great on uh, on Saturday night. It was a great fight. I would like to see that fight again. To be honest with you, credit Rematch. to those guys. KSI hopped in the ring after, uh, and it looks like he's going to be fighting Dennis in the next. His own X series, uh, January 14th, if I'm not mistaken. Apparently, this is a huge fight. This is a big deal, right? Everybody's been waiting for this one. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I want to hear what, what Jake Paul is going to say about this because oh. this is somebody, Dennis was somebody that Jake Paul called out. Now, all of a sudden, Dennis wants to fight KSI, but never wanted to fight Jake Paul. Mm. I don't know. I, I don't know. Mm. I think Jake Paul is like the boogeyman. When he it might comes be putting to... some fear into these uh, YouTubers. <laughs> he's like the boogeyman. I don't know. Like, he's somebody who has improved a great deal, you know? Well, I guess maybe we'll see Jake Paul when he fights Tommy Fury. But this KSI, is a... K this is a good fight for KSI, though. Yeah, 100% it is, it a good is. fight for KSI. I, I honestly still would say that, that Jake Paul is, is, is too much for both of those guys, KSI and Dennis. Um, but I, I wouldn't mind seeing Jake Paul against uh, against KSI. It I would say KSI is a, a naturally athletic guy. And, and as long as he stays in shape, stays sharpening his craft, he will get better and better. And then there'll be a time when he is ready to get in there with Jake Paul. I, I'm not saying he would win. I'm just saying... Right. He's somebody who's athletically gifted, and he's is getting better as he goes on. Barack, I mean, I, I know you watched the broadcast and you saw Slim, the guy that fought on the other Brooklyn native that fought on the other The Zone X series. I don't know. I've been watching them, and I just been getting the bug. And I was randomly car shopping, and uh, I, I just felt like calling them out. And uh, they actually played it on the broadcast. Yeah, no. What I, happened was you was like you saw how much the cars were worth, and you was like. <laughs> I just need a, 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 I need this much more. More money. You know what? Let me fight one of these YouTubers. <laughs> That's right. But check this out, folks, on the broadcast on set. Someone's called that Slim. <gasps> Everyone Shocker. wants a bit of Slim. Why do they, why? I don't know, uh, man. I don't know, man. Before, where, where were they years ago? Like last year when I was trying so hard for a fight. But now what, when I grinded my way to the top, now everybody wants a piece of Slim. You know, every day I open up Instagram, someone's calling me out. Every single day. But this day. just isn't anybody. Oh. This is a DAZN brother. Wow. This oh. is Ak. Let's take a look at the call out. Let's, let's look at the big screen. <laughs> let's take a look at the call out. Fight fans, what's going on? The Zone X series tonight. That's why I seen Rockman Jr. versus Greg Hardy. I don't want to miss that. I've been talking about the DAZN family, and I, I think I want some smoke. I ain't no fight. I just talk boxing, but I think I can get in shape in a couple months. I think I want to put my head in the mix and I want to fight Slim. I want that smoke with Slim. I'm from Brooklyn. He's from Brooklyn. Let's get it in. I could go four rounds with Slim. I'm ready for the smoke. I want it. Let's go. 18 Fusi. <laughs> looks, like, looks like 2018 Fuzzy. For real. That's what you call him. Okay. You know he wants that smoke slim. Hey. He wants that. He's got hands though, you know. Yeah. A good amateur background as well. He can hey, fight. You know what? I got a little answer for him. You want the smoke with Slimmy Slim? You gotta go through my boy Fuzzy first. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go through my dog Fuzzy. Fuzzy wants all that smoke. Hey. If the price is right, we in there on fight now. How about that? <laughs> no, Fuzzy didn't look very, I don't know. Yeah. He's, he's just like, like again? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. He's just trying to hide the confidence. That's it. I'll yeah, that's it. He's confident. Who knows, though? 2023, before. we could see Ak versus Slim. Wow, Ak, you picked Slim. Slim had a great win. I, I don't, oh, I don't yeah, know. Like he did four, four he he didn't look, I'm talking about his last win. You know what I'm saying? He didn't look super technical. Maybe that's why you called him out. I don't know. But you're going to have to get slim too if you want to fight that guy. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would have to lose maybe 20, 25 pounds. And you say it like yeah, it's nothing. Yeah, I mean, I've done it before. Look, he's tough. He's a tough guy. A little wild for me. Uh, fighting guys that, I mean, one guy that he fought, he actually threw a punch like this, Barack. Yeah. Throughout the fight, it was no. It was, let me tell you something. <laughs> I grew up in martial arts. I fought a lot of people. You know who's the hardest people to fight? All good fighters the like guy, that, right? The guys who don't know how to fight. The guys who, and not to say he don't know how to fight, but the guys who are awkward like that. You know, yeah. those are the people that that hurt you <laughs> by accident. <laughs> by accident. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. You know what I, I mean? Have to, because, I had to be. It's like, it's like Floyd when he fought uh, Maidana. Maidana was throwing punches from like this, like down, like right. what, what the heck, you know? So. Look, look, How do you look, guard look, that? Not, you not, not, not only that, he's a lot younger than me, so more athletic than me. 
But I, I would say give me two months, two and a half months in the gym, get prepared. I can do four rounds with Slim, and I think I can chin check. I mean, I'll work your corner, but damn, you're going to give me my first loss in the corner because I, I, I think he's going to beat you up. Whoa, what beat me up? It's just got, go, go, go gonna, watch the tape. Go I watch the tape. Yo, listen, Slim is the champ, bro. You're the not champ taking of what? title. The champ yo, of what? The, the zone the X series. What? The and zone who, X series. Who did he beat to get? Who did he beat? Who did he beat to get guys that Guys you belt? ain't beat. Guys Who did he you beat? ain't beat. He, he, he beat guys that you ain't beat. Guys, guys, that never, beat you too. guys that never threw a punch in their life. Guys that never been in a ring or in a real fight before in their lives. Bro, talk Those is are the cheap, guys bro. he beat. Talk is cheap. Hey, listen. I'm talk on the zone. I work for the zone. I host a daily show. That I'm don't mean there. you can beat Slim. No, I'm saying it's an easy fight to make. All right? <laughs> hey, I tell you this, though. Let's be honest. When he watched that call out, did you feel his energy? Did he say, let's do it? He said, oh, you got to go through this guy. And oh, if the price is right. Oh, oh, oh you saying he's ducking A little ducking. A little ducking, ducking going I, on. A little ducking no, I, going on. I just think that he, he he doesn't want a soft touch. You know, he wants, <laughs> he wants a real fight. <laughs> uh, he wants a real fight. You don't want a soft touch. Well, you know? I would say. I go straight to the top. I would say it's ducking season. That's what I was uh, Nevertheless, so let's get it in. We got what a little duck in him, maybe. I don't know. A little, a little duck. Not ready for this. Slim, zone. what's I think, up, man? Fight I think, my boy. Sa I think Saddam Ali might have told him what the word is. You know what I'm saying? Because he be oh. he be hanging with Saddam Ali. He worked this corner. Right. He might he might have told him, man. That might not. That might be a tree you don't want to oh, break. Because Saddam Ali remembers you from the recent <laughs> days, back in the days when we was all kids. I, no, I don't know. I don't know. All right, listen, show uh, folks. That's our show for today. Hope you guys enjoy. Peace and love. Stay safe. We're out of here. Uh... Introducing the new DAZN Boxing Show podcast. No matter the time or the place, getting your boxing content has become easier than ever. Tune in as we give you exclusive insights, predictions, fight night recaps, and more alongside the biggest names in the game. All for free. Available globally every Thursday across all audio streaming platforms and with new episodes dropping weekly to give you the latest news. Just type in the DAZN Boxing Show podcast, listen in, and enjoy.